Konbawa. Today we're taking you to a one of a kind place in Kyoto, Japan at Cafe Rhinebeck. For the fluffiest pancakes ever. This is Ira and Christian and the Bombay. So this is Christian and Ira. And we're going from place to place. Let's go! If it's your first time here, don't forget to put the likes, to hit that subscribe button, and to tick the little bell there. What are you waiting for? Do it! So to answer the previous question of the day about the right way to eat spaghetti, the answer is... Actually, you need to eat the spaghetti with one fork. Only one, one fork. fork. Yeah. But wait a minute, didn't you have it with a... Uh, a spoon last time? Yes, yeah, sorry for my sin. But this is the American way. The American people created this. They decided to take fork and spoon and work together. Yay! Because <laughs> we're Americans, we work together. We don't yeah. care if you're a spoon or a fork, we're all Americans. <laughs> So, what's on the menu? I had a splendid pancake with colorful different fruits. Colorful? Yes. Like the rainbow? Mm, yeah. At least three colors were there. Like strawberry, RGB, banana, <laughs> and kiwi. Kiwi. <laughs> I also had a pancake, but to me it didn't feel like I was having a pancake. It felt like I was eating a cloud. Because it was just so fluffy. I have to stress that fluffy. Fluffy. I'll say it again. Fluffy. Fluffy. On this cloud, no. On this pancake, I had uh, flambe apples topped with some light, just very light ice cream and a little dash of uh, caramel, I believe. If rough coffee could take it to cloud nine, this will take it to cloud ten, if you know what I mean. <laughs> and for the drinks, we had two different types of coffee. Yeah, matcha latte. Latte. <laughs> okay, and I had cappuccino with vanilla. The first thing that you notice about service there is that the staff is very quiet and shy. I mean, not too shy, you know. They're like butterflies. Flying? Yeah, flying around you, like just these pretty little butterflies, you know, going around. While they might have been a bit shy or reserved, that still didn't stop them from helping us. And they definitely delivered, despite the you know, so-so English they had there, they'll go out of their way to help you. Plus, the menu was in English. Yeah, Which big yeah. Plus. <laughs> plus. <laughs> Thank God that was a plus. Whatever. Like in the text here, left off. <laughs> right off. Right off. Right As for the design of the place, everything was laid out in a simple manner. Simple chairs, simple uh, tables, and everything's just made out of wood. So it gives you that homey feeling there. One thing you'll notice is that there are a lot of uh, souvenirs there, nicely placed everywhere, on the tables, on the shelves, or even right by the cash register. So you can see like a little Statue of Liberty, you can see a little Santa Claus. It's just a nice vibe there. Question for you. Mm -mm. How was the atmosphere? The atmosphere for me was serene. Serene? What do you mean by that? It means like quiet, peaceful. Like in the garden that we saw. Uh, there is a Japanese garden right there. It has like a little, um, a little um, view. Or outdoors, yes. A little tiny place there in the corner. And this, <laughs> and despite it being so tiny, it just makes you feel so tranquil yeah. and peaceful. And 
I just need to make this motion my hands to yeah emphasize more. But then I won't be like an Italian. But that's for sure a nice place when you drink your morning coffee, when you look at the garden, you can be at peace. <coughs> Not peace like this. I don't do yoga, I did the way. but if I did, I would definitely go to the Japanese garden like that. Also, that place makes you want to meditate there. Meditate? Meditate. Be with me. Ow! You don't meditate. That's meditate meta painful. <laughs> And with everything in mind, I really wish we had to stay there a bit longer. You know that moment on a Sunday morning, maybe Saturday, and you just don't want to get out of bed? That's the same feeling there when you go to Rhinebeck. It's just, you know, just... That's it. <laughs> Period. Full stop. No combo. So, for our fellow parents out there, what about the baby stroller? Where did we put it? We were a little bit scared, me, I was scared to leave it outside, but inside of Rhinebeck there is a waiting room where you can sit, relax and wait for, for the table for you, because I'm pretty sure that this place can be full crowded, you know, of uh, people. So we found place for our stroller in this waiting room. Yeah, we could kick back and relax and not even worry about our stroller because it was in safe hands. Yeah. Are you in good hands? Most places in Japan, as you know by tradition, you need to take off your shoes before going inside of any building. But in Rhinebeck, you don't need to do this. They allow you to, to go in your shoes flip flops, I don't know, yeah. boots, sneakers, boots, whatever. Yeah. So even if you have a hole in your sock, <laughs> you can go to the Rhinebeck. So, how can we get to Rhinebeck? Super easy, just go straight to block, then turn to the left, then when you see the flower shop, just pass it and go straight, then turn to the left, and then on the corner you will see two babushkas, don't talk to them, then turn to the right, and right there. It seems easy when you put it on Google Maps, but even for us it was quite hard to find because the thing is there are so many little alleyways, and this is what makes Japan cool, so many little alleyways there in Kyoto. Yeah, it was in a residential area. I would never even think that the place can exist there. Yeah, yeah. It's not like, you know, okay, go to the restroom area there in the center. No, it's actually pretty secluded. Pretty secluded there. Secluded enough where you can just stay away from the maddening crowd. Mm -hmm. Good book. Yeah, I know it was far away. Remember how f how long and how far yeah, that was? Yeah, it was long, but I enjoy those streets, you know, with different buildings. And it's funny to see how people park their cars. Oh, yeah. And just, you see the real culture. It's not like in the center when everything is modern. It's just traditional houses with their little gardens, like... Yeah, outside. Little mm, pots with flowers. Because they don't have trees, or maybe you don't see them at all. Yeah. That's why people uh, found the coolest way, I would say. They're just creating their own parks, you can yeah. call whatever you want. Just by putting little pots of different flowers. And it's so cool to see these yes. designs and about flowers. I found even flowers that we have here uh, in Ukraine. And when you're passing, just have a smell of your um motherland i don't know motherland <laughs> so about the prices uh, not again yeah and it's no. expensive expensive again eat that no it's pretty pricey probably the most expensive breakfast we had there in kyoto but still nonetheless quite expensive it's expensive but not breaking the bank kind of expensive but it's worth it it's worth it we'll definitely go back there in a heartbeat the next time we're going to japan right 
So change those dollars, change those pesos, uh, griffin, uh, pounds, euros, francs, the other francs. Get your yen, get these pancakes, and go. Black time. So Ira-chan, how much would you pay for the world's most expensive pancake? No more than fifty dollars. No more than fifty dollars. No more than fifty dollars. Is that your final answer? You heard me. <laughs> yeah. Did you know that the world's most expensive pancake <laughs> is very expensive? It's very expensive. A thousand dollars. One k. One grand. What yeah. The if you want to take a bite out of that, that's at the Radisson Hotel in Manchester, England. How about if we go there one day hmm. soon? Let us know in the comment section if you think we should try the world's most expensive pancake. So, do you know anything about this Rhinebeck place? Yeah, I know a little bit about the owner. Her name is Akiko Hirano. Yeah. So she went to the US for her higher education. She learned about traditional sweet making under Professor Jean Carroll at the University of Connecticut in the northeastern region of the US. When she graduated university, she acquired her cake diploma. Upon returning back to Japan, she opened up her own shops and made history here. Cake making classes, a pantry store, and the one and only Cafe Rhinebeck. Cool. Opened up in January 2011 in Kyoto, Japan. Really? 2011? Yeah, 2011. So, so just eight years ago. Eight years ago, not too long ago. Question of the day. Where do pancakes originally come from? Do you know? I'm completely stumped. I have no idea. Don't look at me. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna... Look at it. Okay, so let's find out in our next video. We're gonna find out? Me? I will find out. Okay, you. St stay tuned. <laughs> Thank you for watching us. Don't forget to put likes as many as possible. To subscribe and... Never give up! And to tick that little bell. Arigato! See you, See you at the, the next, next place. place.